Bruh, this is a bit close. A bit close, bro. Boom. We're using our hands. We're using our hands. Okay. Let's talk about how to pass the Bank of America video interview for 2023. What's up guys, it's Mike from Job Ready English here with another video to help you get hired. Today we're talking about the US banking giant Bank of America and how you can pass their interview for 2023. We're going to start off with five fast facts about Bank of America that you can use in your answer for why you want to work for this company. Then I'm going to cover the format that you can expect for a graduate interview and what that's going to look like the seven most common questions that we found you're probably going to get asked for your video interview. And I'm going to be covering an eighth bonus question, which ties into a comment from one of our viewers who asked after watching our UBS past the interview video. So let's get started. Fact number one, Bank of America can trace its roots all the way back to the Bank of Italy in 1904 which was set up to allow banking for Italian immigrants who were facing discrimination from other banks. Fact number two, as of March 31st, 2023, Bank of America has $3.1 trillion assets under management. Fact number three, Bank of America employs 217,000 people across the world, making it one of the world's largest employers. Fact number three, Bank of America holds over 10% of all deposits put into American banks, rivaling many of the other big high street banks like JP Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo. Fact number five, Euro Money Magazine awarded Bank of America the world's best bank for diversity and inclusion. So let's talk about what is the format that you can expect for your Bank of America video interview. And funnily enough, this is something I literally went through yesterday with a client. So I know it's correct. Hey, that's for all the negative comments. <laughs> it's always one negative guy that's just like actually this is what happened in my interview and i'm like oh i'm so sorry guy because i'm totally trying to make a free video to help you with your interview so sorry anyway ran over so here's what you can expect it's going to be a higher view video interview it's going to have five questions each question you're going to have three minutes to answer and 30 seconds to think. And if you want all the help that you'll need to get the best chance to pass your Bank of America video interview, make sure you check out our Pass the Interview Pack down in the link in the description below. So let's go through the seven most common questions that you can be expected to be asked in Bank of America's High View video interview. Question number one, tell me about yourself. Now, three minutes is really quite a long time to answer a question. And script wise, you're looking at about 300 words. I always say 100 words a minute is a good rate for your script. Some people speak slightly faster, some people speak slightly slower. It's always good to know your words per minute when you're speaking so that you can adjust your script accordingly. Preparing for tell me about yourself is a really fantastic thing to do if you've got no interviews at all and you're just curious about how to get started because it's going to come up so often in your interviews now we break down tell me about yourself in an in-depth video which you can check out in the link up above which basically comes down to six parts part number one what are you doing right now part number two what have you done previously Part number three, what would you like to do in the future? Part four, your work experience. Part five, extracurricular and volunteering. And finally, part six, other skills and interests, which mainly revolves around technology, languages, and general hobbies. Now, if you don't have any work experience, that's fine. Just talk about your extracurricular activities, your volunteering, or just stuff that you've done in your studies. Now, what are you doing now will probably be the degree that you're studying right now. If you're a professional and you're watching this video, then you're going to be talking about the job that you're doing now and what was the job that you did previously. What you want to do in the future is obviously work for Bank of America in the role that you're applying for. So that's fairly self-explanatory. Now, for skills and interests, a lot of people say, well, why are my hobbies relevant? Why are all these other things relevant? No one thing by themselves is necessarily relevant, but these all add up to say something about yourself. For example, do you speak multiple languages? Do you know a coding language? Are you good at Excel? What sort of hobbies do you like? 
These are all things which add to your character. So are good things to add it. Question number two, why do you want to work for our company? Now, I've already gone through five fast facts about Bank of America. And in our past the interview pack, we've got a fact sheet with 90 facts about Bank of America that you can choose from. What you'll notice from the facts that I've given you and the reason why I use the rather catchy phrase five fast facts is it's just something easy for you to remember. Does it matter what facts you choose? Not really, in all honesty. I would suggest that you choose different varieties of facts, whether that be about revenue, projects, ESG, whatever. But try to make it a little bit varied and also interesting for you. A way to level up this question a little bit in terms of your response is to maybe mention one thing and how that relates to you personally and why it's important to you. What you want to avoid when answering this question is not doing your homework, which to be frankly honest with you is about 15 or 20 minutes on Bank of America's website, looking at their investor relations and probably their media releases, which is the way to get easily accessible information that Bank of America want to publicize to their shareholders. You don't want to be giving a generic answer like it's a big bank and it'd be great for me to be there and then basically just start talking about yourself. That's not what they're interested in. Talk about Bank of America, talk about what makes them good and what you're really interested in. Question number three, what are your strengths? You've only got three minutes to answer this question, so I would suggest that you use no more than three strengths. About one strength a minute. Now, how do you choose those strengths? Just look at the job description for the role that you're applying to. What are the types of characteristics and skills that Bank of America is looking for? Just use those as your strengths and find examples and proof which will back those up, whether that be your greater teamwork or your greater leadership or numerical ability, whatever it is that you need to do, find something that's going to back that up and provide proof. Very often when I hear people answer this question, they'll provide a long list of strengths, but no proof, which means actually that's not my experience, that's my opinion about myself. By adding in an experience to the strength, you provide proof to your answer. Question number four, what are your weaknesses? Now we've got three minutes to answer this, but I would suggest you would do no more than two weaknesses. Most people when they talk to me about are most concerned about, apart from tell me about yourself. So it's not what is your biggest weakness, it's really what is an important lesson that you've learned. Maybe there was a time when you were disorganized and that meant that you didn't hand in a piece of coursework on time. So you did certain things, you learned your lessons so that you're no longer like that. So you can, again, kind of flip the strengths that you would need, talk about how this was your weakness, then you learn a lesson and now it has become a strength. And two should be perfectly fine for this. Question number five, describe a challenging situation you faced at work and how would you handle it? Now, first of all, for those of you who don't have work experience, don't worry about it. Just think about something from your extracurricular activities or from your academic group work. Now, when answering this question, you wanna think about STAR, situation, task, action, result. The majority of your answer should be based in STAR, 70%. If you're interested in me doing a video where I break down how to hack the STAR technique, please make sure to drop me a comment down below. Now laying out the situation is basically, where were you, when was this? The task is what happened, the action is what did you do, and the result is basically what, what was the great thing that happened afterwards. Now, an important thing about this question is clearly defining the challenge and breaking down the steps to solve this challenge. Now, this sounds very simplistic, but what I have noticed when I've watched people over the years answer this question, I'll be like, there was a challenge and then I fixed it and they've completely missed out the actions. So what I want you to imagine instead is that you are teaching somebody how to solve this challenge. So saying, okay, Steve, if this was to happen to you, here's the exact steps that you need to go through to solve this challenge. This really helps people to break down their explanation of what they need to do when they imagine that they are trying to teach somebody else how to do something. And the other thing is really trying to define why it was challenging. Was it because of the person, the time frame, changing information, the complexity of the task? 
What is the challenge that makes me feel like, oh, how would you overcome this? This is something that other people maybe wouldn't be able to do. Question number six, how do you handle tight deadlines or high pressure situations? Now this reminds me about the difference between strength and competency questions, but also the similarities. This week I've been helping somebody prepare for their HSBC final round interviews and she was asking me about the difference between strength questions and competency questions. To which my response was, actually there's not too much difference if you really want to dig into it. Now, with a strength question, first of all, your answer is very off the cuff. You know, actually I'm great in high pressure situations. I'm able to take a step back, appraise all the things that need to happen and then organize, delegate and make decisions effectively. Cool. Then you can just go into a competency style answer. You can say a time when I did this was then provide an example of what you wanted to do. I find that this is a really effective way to answer strength questions because otherwise you'll have a tendency to ramble to go, yeah, no, I'm also really good at this and this and this and this and it kind of goes on and on and on. You can either give a really quick off the cuff answer to a strength question, which is no more than 30 seconds. If you've got three minutes, maybe it's better for you to provide an example. Question number seven, why do you want to do this role? Now, whenever you're asked this question, always remember that this is a two part answer. Part number one is purely about you explaining what the role entails. The reason being is any video interview which is being analyzed using an algorithm is going to be looking to pick out the keywords and phrases which are relevant to the job that you're doing because your entire kind of single sentence purpose when looking for a job is tailoring your skills and experience to the job that is required. So all you do first of all is just say, well, as a finance analyst, I would be expected to do, and then essentially summarize the job description. The second part is going to be very similar to what are your strengths? You're gonna pick out two, maybe three key things, key skills, uh, whether they be hard or soft skills and just demonstrate and say i think i'd be really good for this role because i'm good at abc and then provide the proof okay guys so here is our eighth and bonus question and actually it reminded me um last week okay irene uh, left me a comment hopefully that comment should pop up saying hey i just wanted to say that your videos really helped me during this application cycle i've been reading online that ubs may ask current questions so do you have any advice on how to go about that? And question eight for me is tell me about a recent piece of business news. Now, there are really two different types of people who apply to work at a bank. People who kind of live and breathe it and love the finance news and have always really dreamed of working at a bank and people who don't. To be frankly honest with you, people who've got absolutely no idea about business and banking and are just kind of attracted because it looks cool and they'll make loads of money. And both of those are absolutely fine. But when you're talking about a recent piece of business news, there are a few bits of advice I can give to people who are brand new to it. I'm not gonna to need to give you this advice if you're consuming Bloomberg, CNBC, The Economist, um, The Financial Times, you're gonna get the gist of it, right? Uh, the only advice that I'd give to you is, is just keep it simple because you've only got three minutes. Now this applies to both types of people. First of all, pick something micro versus macro. Micro, I mean just a particular event, something that's happened to a company, something that's quite simple. The reason being is, is that often I will see people try and explain macro events like inflation or interest rates or some sort of global trade war. That's really hard to compress into three minutes. They find themselves getting confused, thinking they've left stuff out because really you've bitten off more than you can chew. A good place to start for business news if you really know nothing about business is just BBC Business News. It's one of my favourites. I've started people there for years because it's really simple and easy to understand. The writing is good and it may link to other articles so you can explain that a little bit more. My last piece of advice is pick something that you find is genuinely interesting to you. Um, and this really applies for a lot of uh, answers for interview questions. Very often people will pick examples or things that they think that somebody wants to hear. That's not helpful because you sound disinterested and bored and I'm gonna be disinterested and bored. Pick stuff that is interesting to you and if you can't pick between A or B, always just think, what is more interesting to me? What is something I feel more comfortable talking about? Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please press like, uh, drop us a comment down below, let us know where you're at in your applications, have we helped you with your interview or let us know how you get on after you watch this video. Until next time, good luck.